It was in 2002 that I accepted the work at the East Side Church of Christ in Cleveland, Tennessee. My wife and I were moving to that area. And so a few months later, we found the right house. We moved in. And on a Saturday morning, I looked out my back door. Down behind me, there was a couple there. And so I yelled out in my old Southern vernacular, hi, your neighbors, went down and paid them a visit. Well, I got to talking with them and I got talking specifically with Joe. That's my neighbor's name. And I got talking to Joe and learned that Joe and his wife, Sandy, were unfaithful members of the church. And so we started talking a little bit and I knew that you try to push certain people. And they're not ready. So what I would do is talk about the good things that were going on at the Eastside Church of Christ. And we talk about some things. And then his brother became very ill with cancer. His brother, Oscar Boo, was uh, part of the Palmetto Messenger newspaper or periodical. It's now called the Carolina Messenger. And so Oscar became sick and And we started talking about that song. Well, one Sunday night, I looked up, and there's Joe and Sandy sitting in the assembly. And my wife were delighted to see them. Well, they would come some, and folks would ask me who they are or who they were. And one Wednesday night, I put their name up on the overhead. Now, at the time, we did not have PowerPoint, so I used the overhead projector and created my own slides. And I put their address up there because his brother Oscar had passed away. Well, a few days later, Joe called me and said, they went out to the mailbox and there were like 60 cards from the church. People had reached out. Well, Joe and Sandy started coming back regularly and they were restored to the faith and remained faithful until Joe passed. Sandy has moved away. Her health is not the best. She's living in South Carolina. But we've often talked about what would have happened if we would have picked another house where we live and how the Lord opened that and to God be the glory. Amen. Yeah. Well, tell us who you are, where you're from and, uh, what's an interesting fact about yourself. Well, I'm Jeff Archie and I live in the United States, Cleveland, Tennessee, and I am the speaker and the director of the long running international gospel hour. We've been on the air 87 years. And you can hear us worldwide, if not over the air radio. You can hear us on the internet at internationalgospelhour.com. You can download our app for your smartphone, or if you're into podcasts, whatever your podcast preference is, your platform you like to use, put International Gospel Hour in the search engine, and you just might find us there. And you can hear our broadcast anywhere and everywhere. And to God be the glory. To God be the glory. That's a great 80 years. That's, that's amazing. Isn't it? It is. Brother B.E. Howard walked into a radio station in Hot Springs, Arkansas in 1934. (laughs) They didn't think it would go over very well, but it did. And somewhere every week for 87 years, it's been online or on the air. And the best research we can tell, Titus, we are the second longest running religious or weekly religious broadcast in the history of radio. That's on. And that's amazing. And we give the God the glory. Yeah, that's, and keep going, huh? Another 80 years. That'd be great. <laughs> hey, that'll work fine. Works for me. That was a great story, by the way. The, on this show, we, we like to talk about uh, strategies for evangelism. So helping people share their faith. What are some strategies that you have or you found or have been useful to you in your walk as a Christian? Well, a lot of my Work has changed, of course, because I do so much with radio and television, and I found that that can be useful for individuals. We help churches with their radio program. If their preacher's very busy, they can use our radio program. We respond to a variety of requests for study materials and all. But when I was in local work, Titus, a lot of times, I would find someone who maybe was a guest to the worship service. We have a lot of prospects sitting on our pews. And uh, sometimes I would get to talking about something I preached or something of their interest. And then I would simply say, would you like to study the Bible with? And then we would sit down and what I prefer was sitting at the kitchen table, a good home Bible study. I love to use the tool back to the Bible, the late for the Bobby Bates developed. That's a very good tool to use. 
I have uh, also used uh, Brother Carl Sims out of Clarksville, Tennessee, he is upon the rock study. And I've used his material. Phil Sanders has a good four part series. And so there are a number of tools to use that can help along that way to sit down with that individual and talk with them and uh, study the Bible with them. I have found most reward. And that's one of the easiest ways that I have gone about it. If there is a prospect or someone who is interested, that can also open a door. Somebody that's a guest to your services, to the worship that needs some assistance. It's good to follow up with them, maybe to drop by their house within the week. Hey, you were by on Sunday. I just, I don't want to come in. Just want to see how you're doing. How are things going? And then they open up a little more. And that may be the opportunity for the study to, to come forth. If every member of the Lord's church would aim to teach the Bible to one person a year, convert them, imagine what that would be. And it's easy to do. That's a good point. Uh, yeah, that'd be amazing if you could do one person a year. I, it, it's, it's, and, it, and the neat part is it'd be phenomenal for that person who's teaching and, and bringing, you know, not just for the person who hears, but the one who talks. What's some ways that you found that when you talk to people, let's say they're a guest, what are some ways to approach them that you you might give advice to? And how, how can you get to that point where you say, let's study the Bible? Because some people may not even be there. So what, what what would be your kind of mindset? You see a guest, what would you do as they come in? Well, with a guest, you would welcome them. It'd be nice. Don't pepper, don't pepper them with a thousand questions. <laughs> you know, just say, uh, you know, let them know it's nice to have you here. Thanks for coming. Just curious, you live here close by? Well, yeah, I live over here on so-and-so. Well, look, I'm glad you chose to be with us today. And then afterward, a lot of times people don't mind filling out a card of their visit, but sometimes people don't. And if they are there, they're probably there due to the invitation of someone. So ask that person, what can you tell me about so-and-so who was here? And then you kind of get a little indication, a little idea of what that interest level is. That each week you just want to do a little bit more and, and to build that friendship, that relationship. It's a pattern that's just as simple as John, the fourth chapter, where the, where Jesus began by saying, give me to drink Hey, look at what all they had to overcome in that conversation. She was a woman of Samaria. Oh, Jesus shouldn't have been talking to her. But as they were talking and reasoning together, one question led to another. It's the same way for us today. And that's a good tool to use. Inviting a person out to eat is very nice. Hey, would you like to join me for lunch next Lord's Day when you worship? Would you like to go out to lunch with me? And that's a good opportunity. Breaks a lot of dice. Jesus was always around a meal a lot of times, you know, when he went to Matthew's house, they were eating sure. together. So <laughs> meals are good. And, uh, you know, if you, if you don't have anything to say, you just eat. <laughs> so. yeah, that, that's it. Enjoy the meal together. Because, you know, I, I learn more about people. When you're relaxed in their house, then you do, or relax somewhere to meal. You learn more about them than you can in the foyer of the church building or greeting in the pew during between Bible study and worship or afterward. Now, nothing wrong with that, but uh, kind of in a, in a lunch, a little informal setting, you learn a little bit more. You know, you learn about their word. Sometimes you talk, and especially here in the South, you find out, oh, you knew. And, uh, and then you get to talking and you look at one another and say, Hey man, if we keep talking, we're going to be third cousins by the time this is over. <laughs> so anyway, but, uh, but yeah, it, it, that, that helps so much Titus. It, it puts the person at ease. If you're at their house, it puts them at ease. And some people are not quite, they may not be ready to invite you over, but they'll be ready to go out to eat. That's always. Yeah. Just to having that mindset of, um, sure. developing a relationship. So Jeff, you have any more strategies that come to mind uh, that you might want to share? Follow up with those that are in the pew with you, or maybe a neighbor, if you're talking to them, when you find that person that is in need, if somebody says, would you pray for my family? It's always good to follow up with them and say, you know, how is your family? That means a lot to people. And it's just those simple little things like that, that make a big difference. And again, look at the pattern of the Lord Christ. Look what happened when Philip in Acts 8 ran to a chariot and just asked a simple question. Do you understand what you're reading? And of course, how that conversation went as well. So a lot of wonderful patterns there in the New Testament that we can follow after and, uh, and use in our lives. When you follow up, uh, what are some things you use to follow up? Do you have a list or 
Do you write stuff down? Like, how do you know, you know, cause there's a lot of people are busy and they always, for, I forget a lot of times. What's some ways that you uh, have found be, to be useful following up, helping you follow up? Well, what helps me is when I was in local work, I would take a Sunday and I would look over our list of guests and all. And then I would, uh, you know, have folks to send cards or individuals to make some phone calls, whatever the case might be. Now, that was my position as a preacher. What I would suggest as a member, look around. I mean, Titus, I don't know what it's like in New Zealand, but over here, everybody sits in the same place. Everybody has their spot where they like to sit. You know, I, I used to walk in and look for a footstool or a pillow left on a bench or a quilt or something. Then I had to look for tape and X's with COVID. And I just started going to the front row. Nobody sits on the front row, so I'm not taking anybody's pew. But anyway, <laughs> where you sit, look around. Because the number one thing a person remembers from their visit is not the preacher. It's not his sermon. It's not the singing. It's who spoke to them in front of them, behind them, or to the signs. That's what they remember. And so look around, see who's new, and, and pursue their end. And uh, again, follow up when you see them and they tell you their name. It, it, you have a challenge remembering names. Try this. For example, I've called your name several times just to keep it in mind. You're Titus Blair. And when you call the name several times, as soon as they walk away, keep something in your pocket, write their name down. It, it can be embarrassing not to remember but little by little, you'll make the difference. Yeah. And it, that's what people who are listening might be uh, almost shocked to think about it, that they're like, well, I, th I thought it was the preacher. I thought it was the singing, but you're right. It is about community. It's about being welcome and feeling like family. Yeah. That's what people remember more than anything of their visit. Mm -hmm. And then little things like, uh, keep your foyer in nice shape, keep Bible tracks in your foyer. A lot of times people walk in, they start looking at those and people will read them. Jimmy G is a former missionary to Tanzania. He did a survey and a study that tracks they would give away that it's like that track would be read up to 10 different times before wow. it would be discarded. Now that's over there and, you know, culture changes. But anyway, I, I thought that was rather important to know that. Well, you can't read something you don't provide. That's it. If you know, keep, keep it looking nice. Keep your foyer, your church building and all have something with you. And you may want to pass a track to someone or give something to someone as well. We find that we make a lot of things available through our work at International Gospel Hour. Our broadcast, we're constantly giving away, giving information where people can see us, where people can find more information, people like that. That's good. Yeah. So just a couple recap here. If you're a member of a church and you think you just sit and that's all you do, that's probably not a good idea because you can do a lot more than that. You can, you can greet people, you can look, you can start praying. So if you're listening to this and you thought, what can I do? Well, you've got something to do now. <laughs> you, know, you got something. That's to right. That's right. Do you have any more strategies? And otherwise we'll go on to the call to action. Those are just some small things along the way, Titus, that are easy to do. They take time to develop, but once you get them going, that individual can be the sole winner for Christ. They need. That's right. And it's not, uh, it's not too hard. It just takes effort. Like you just got to do it, right? You just got to commit to doing it. And you also mentioned the tracks, which I think is great because if you're going to church and you have tracks there, you can pick those tracks up too and, or, you know, ask the congregation. And then you can also go and take those tracks and put them places, you know, if you go out to eat somewhere. So that same philosophy of that, you, you, you can be active in your community in that way as well by leaving those out. Sure. Doctor's offices are very good. Waiting yeah. rooms are very good. The house to house, heart to heart from house to house dot com. Fantastic publication. Well to use. We would encourage people, hey, leave this, go to the doctor this week, leave a copy right. Because it has all the local information there that you need. And, and Titus, let me throw this one and tell you another one. Uh, we have a lot of paper boxes in front of stores that people will put in uh, like home magazines if you're looking for a house or free publications. Well, a lot of times those publications cease those boxes sit there empty for the longest. I would take house to house, heart to heart. I'd put them in the box, oh, put one in the window in the front and then put them in the box. And well, if somebody comes along and says, Hey, they took my box, they're just going to throw them away. 
Well, uh, I'd rather them be out there and be thrown away there than to be stored in the back room of a church building, <laughs> you know? So clean out your buildings, folks. There's a lot of tools that they're using. Well, when Jesus comes back, you better not have any tracks left. You got that right. <laughs> you better make sure that bank account is mighty low. That's right. Amen. Well, that's, that's great. I like that, that idea. Cause there are churches that, you know, they're thinking and trying to think of ideas and that even as a church body, they could look for that and actually set that up somewhere. They don't have to just use one that somebody else had that you could look, if you're listening, you can actually go find that and say, Hey, let's set one of those up somewhere. So that's, sure, I mean, that's they're something. sitting there empty. Why not put them right. to use? Yeah. Yeah. Don't and get your own, <laughs> get your own too. If there's, if there's, if there's not any empty ones, get it, get your own. That was great. That was a good bonus. Do you have another story for us? Oh my, I think about one young lady responded to the gospel one night. And uh, this is a young lady that you wonder what was taking her so long. But uh, that night she came forward and her, her mom was homesick. But when she came forward, she hugged me and she said, you got me. So I don't know what I said or did, but of course, it's the power of the word of God. And I remember that when we were in the baptistry, the song leader did not get the signal from his girlfriend don't leave the next verse there in the baptistry. And he didn't turn around. And so we're standing there and Titus, I can't explain, but when you're in the baptistry with someone, songs go slower. And so we're standing there. A dear sister is off to the right recording this live where her mom can see in technology. Great. And yeah. so we're standing there and I've already told her, you know, what to do when I take her backward and cover her mouth and all. Well, we just decided we'd just start singing with the song. Oh, it was a joy just to sing with her. And uh, sad to say, an auto accident took life. Mm. But she was prepared to meet the Lord. Nah. And for that, we are great, thankful for that. But uh, that's just another highlight of uh, someone that obeyed the gospel of Christ. Or to study with someone and take a look and they'll say, well, hey, why can't I be baptized right? Well, right. let's go. It's just a beautiful thing. It really is. So, um, so as far as our call to action, look, we know the commission, we know those who are committed and we know what we need to be about doing. So let's be about the work of the Lord, find that soul that you can tell them about Christ and uh, find us if we can be of help at international gospel hour, international gospel hour.com, send me a message and I'd love to hear. From you. Leaving with that story is so powerful because when a Christian dies, it's a joyful time because we know that we're going to see him again. But when a non-Christian dies, it's a very sad time because yeah. their life is over. And those of you listening, that's why it's called Be Brave, because there's a reason to be brave. Uh, many people who are brave, it's not that they don't have fear. It's that they overcome their fear. And the Bible says perfect love casts out fear, right? Like we need to have that love to be not afraid to tell people. Because had you not talked to her, had, had you not um, shown her Jesus, that's really why she came. Then she would have died in that accident. And that and yes. would have been terrible. And she had a background of family and she'd been coming there all her life. But it was just that, you know, why it's taken so long? And sometimes we wonder about that. Hey, just sow the seed. That's all we can do. His word will not return unto him void. You've been listening to Be Brave. The world right now is a crazy place. And sharing the love of God is the most important thing we can do right now. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. And we'll be back soon. But in the meantime, hit up GoBeBrave.org. Remember, the love of God is the most powerful force in the universe. Learn how to love like Jesus. See you next time.